Valley. And when you look at, you know, we're, we're boiling down now to, you know, with the next governor, basically the, the criteria is, where are you going to get an opportunity to have a governor who will at least listen to some arguments? I mean, that's really what it comes down to. You know, we, on cap and trade, the governor Brown for the first time listened. We had, we had to be very aggressive in order to get him to listen and balance the policy, but they finally did. When it came to things like minimum wage, they didn't listen. It was strictly a labor play. And between the Bureau Gross and Newsom, who potentially is the best for at least having a discussion with business to show as they look at some of these policies and what's going to be coming on this progressive agenda, you know, are they willing to listen? And I, right now, we see probably Pierre Rosa as a better listener. Let me ask you one more element to the whole thing, and that's geography. <laughs> you look at the polling data, uh, obviously Gavin Newsom does well in the Bay Area, former mayor of San Francisco, and uh, Antonio Villaraigosa does much better in Southern California. Uh, also, Antonio has a much hugely among Latino uh, voters, potential Latino voters. Uh, one could envision, don't say it's going to happen, but one could envision the situation in which Southern California goes for Villaraigosa, the Bay Area goes for Gavin Newsom, and the Central Valley decides what, who really winds up being elected governor. 